One-handed jump float. Is there a difference between one and two-hand jump float? I think it's preference. I think the, the advantage of having a one-handed jump float is that oftentimes you'll see nowadays too is that a lot of, a lot of uh, jump floaters will start with that hand prepped already. So if you have someone with a late arm or a lazy arm or they're not getting their elbow back and you want them to jump float and they're ready for it, not a bad idea to say, hey, get it up there right now, hold the ball in the other hand and go from there. I think this is a very unathletic move. I prefer just to keep a little bit more of an approach so we'll watch Pinky do some one-handed approach. I think the one-handed toss, go ahead, perhaps has the potential to be not as consistent. Now Pinky is one of our freshmen, so she, one of the things that her challenges is is to, is to get more consistent on her lift. Because when she has a good lift, it's one of the nastiest serves that we see. It has good velocity, but when she came in hitting this twice as hard, the first thing I had to do is we had to reel her back and say 80%. Good thing, good feedback for your kids who have, if you have a crazy, crazy server, and I know Russ is in here saying serve that back wall, serve as hard as you can, I think that's a great idea once you have control over a ball. If you do not, I think good feedback for a server is, I just say, pinky 80%. She knows exactly what I mean. She's going to take a little bit off of it. She gets better contact. There's no spin on it. And she's able to control it. Again, one of the things we're talking about is accuracy. One more. Look at the rhythm. Last two steps are quick. Just like the approach, I think there's natural crossover to a, training the approach to, a, to go ahead and hit a ball. There's natural crossover to swing blocking the same thing. Okay. 